I call the move of Shell Harbour. Thank you, Speaker. On Tuesday of this week, the Illawarra Mercury broke the news that DAPTO could be cut off from the Albion Park Rail bypass. It seems that roads and maritime services have refused to confirm whether an interchange will be constructed at the Yalla to service the residents of West DAPTO as a part of the completed project. The direct quote provided to the Mercury was, quote, funding is yet to be allocated for the Yalla interchange as modelling shows it is not required until there is a substantial increase in traffic, end quote. And what would qualify as a, as a substantial increase in traffic? Well, apparently not 50,000 new residents that will settle in the area in the coming two decades. West Apto is set to become a mini city, rivalling the Shell Harbour local government area within the next 20 years, and approximately 19,000 new dwellings, uh, and yet its entire population will not be granted access to this major infrastructure project. If this interchange and the on-off ramps are not constructed, the communities of West Apto will be cut off from the M1 and forced to continue using the Princess Highway even after the project's completion. They will be forced to allow, to allow over 30% more time for their journeys. They will be forced to use 16 additional uh, intersections and they will be forced to sit a further six sets of traffic lights than every other community in our region. To deliberately cut off thousands of hard-working Illawarra residents from the region's main arterial roads and unfairly exclude an entire community from the benefits of this road is simply unfair. The residents of West Apto deserve to receive the same benefits and the same opportunities from this project as the rest of the region. Just yesterday, the Illawarra Mercury published my community's response to this piece of news in an article called Residents Angry at Dapto Could Miss Out on the Bypass. The public have even been quick to, to voice their views on these designs, and it's time that this government started to listen. The anger and the bitter disappointment is, in my opinion, completely justified, especially considering how this project has been sold to them over the past few months by the member for Kayama. For example, on August the 23rd, less than one month ago, the member for Kayama released a statement saying the Albion Park Ride <coughs> Bypass was, was what, quote, our community and commuters deserve, end quote. Shockingly, our community apparently no longer includes West Apto. But most shamefully of all, the member for Kayama on the September 12th, less than two weeks ago, said that this project, and again I quote, complete the missing link for a highway between Sydney and Bombardieri and provide easy access to DAPDO, end quote. To explicitly mention the Albion Park Rail bypass providing easy access to the area of DAPDO, publicly commit to this design and then backflip just nine days later is nothing short of betrayal to lo local residents. And finally, the member for Kayama's website under Project History, he has also promised my community that the bypass will make it easier to get DAPTO and will allow these communities to bypass 16 intersections and cut their travel times by about 30 per cent. member for Kayama has rep re repeatedly told DAPTO community that they would benefit from this project. He has mentioned these residents specifically, but sadly, this is just one more broken promise that we can add to the now frustratingly long list. We'll put it right below the ones, the ones promised, no catch $251 million upgrade for Shell Harbour Public Hospital and the disappointments of the DAPDO tapes gutting, the removal of service New South Wales from Shell Harbour and the lack of educational infrastructure for West DAPDO and of course DAPDO stations dangerously overcrowded commuter car park. Commuter car park. It should come as no surprise to this House that the recently completed Berry Bypass was thoughtfully designed and made accessible to the entire Berry community. However, the same clearly you cannot be said for the DAPTO community. Up. Simply because they fall within a different electorate, we cannot allow this project to become a political issue. It makes sense now that when I requested a meeting with the Minister in regards to this project, my office received the following response just last week. And again I quote, the Minister has a very busy schedule and at this stage she is unable to meet with you, end quote. I also understand that the cost of this project has already blown out by over $100 million, but the community of West Apto should not be forced to pay the price for this government's mismanagement. Minister. Speaker, there are currently two options uh, that this government is considering. Only one of these designs makes sense. This is a piece of infrastructure that has been much needed, long awaited and overdue by this government for the last six years. However, the construction date has finally appeared on the horizon and this government has decided to start cutting corners and asking our community to compromise. To overlook one of the fastest growing areas in New South Wales and give the residents of West Apto zero consideration in this plan is not only short-sighted but cruel considering how long this bypass has been planned, publicised in our region. 
We have a responsibility to ensure that local infrastructure development keeps pace with this expected population growth. It is also our duty, duty to ensure that residents of West Apto are provided with the same opportunities and advantages of the rest of the region. I call on this government to listen to my community, to commit to That's this project without compromising, without compromising and build the yellow interchange and the on-off ramps for the residents of West Apto.